This is an instructional video on positioning the posable hand in XFDTD. The posable hand is useful for engineers who design handheld devices and want to simulate the effects of various scripts. The video includes a brief introduction to the model and provides purchasing information and will then show how to manipulate and use the hands in XF. The posable hand model is developed and distributed by Cat Human. It is an STL file and XF is able to recognize and import this model. During import, there will be additional controls applied to it, so that way the hand, the fingers, and thumbs can be positioned into various different grips. The posable hand is purchased directly from CAD Human at their website at cadhuman.com at the bottom of the screen. And once you've purchased it, there will be various downloads available, and you'll want to choose the one that says XFDTD compatible at the bottom of the screen. Once the file has been downloaded and unzipped, you'll want to import the file into XFDTD, and this is using the same steps as, edit, as any CAD file. You'll also then want to assign a material, um, and specifically the CTIA Phantom Hand from the library is of interest. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. As you can see, this project already contains the hand models. They were brought in from the file import CAD files menu. You just browse to the directory containing the STL file and import it. They'll show up here as two assemblies with uh, the fingers, thumb, palm, and forearms for each. And you'll notice that the materials are not assigned. So if you come over here to the libraries, search for the other material library that's provided with the XF installation, go to the materials, and select the CTIA Phantom Hand. You can then click, drag, and drop it into the materials definition. And in order to apply it to the two hands, just to select the assemblies, right click and say assign material. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm also going to want to bring in a handheld device so that way we can position the fingers around it. So this is just on my machine. I'll also go to my libraries, a device library, go to the parts, and I will drag and drop a device into my project. So now we can see that I have a device and uh, two hands. The next thing I'll want to do is open the editor, which will allow me to then position the fingers and thumbs in the hands relative to the device. Before I show the controls for the right hand, I'm going to start off by setting the left hand invisible so it's out of the way. I'm then going to right click on the right hand, come down here to edit posable hand, and this is going to open up the controls that allow me to reposition the fingers in the hand. You can't see these controls until you actually click on the device, or sorry, until you actually click on the, the model. So here, for example, I clicked on the palm, and I now have controls that allow me to translate the hand uh, as well as rotate uh, the hand as, as I need to. Instead of clicking on the palm, I can click on fingers. So here, for example, if I click on this finger, well then the joint below it will open, uh, allow me to, to move the fingers. Similarly, I can click on any finger and, and move them as such. So I'm going to start off by looking at a landscape view of this hand. So I want to rotate uh, the thumb up a little bit and around um, just so this way um, it's in line with how I hold my phone. I'm then going to use the index finger and use the same controls to bring these in. Each time clicking on the section of the finger I'm interested in and then rotating around the joint. And then finally um, I'm interested in my middle finger and gripping the back of the phone. You'll notice that I am only modifying the first three fingers uh, for right now. And that's because um, I'm going to match these three fingers to the phone, and then once they're matched, and then I'll worry about the other two. So with those fingers positioned, I'm then going to match the hand to the phone by specifying six points. There's going to be these three points across the top that are going to define the points on the hand. So here I'm going to select the, the point on the, the middle finger. I'm going to select the point up here that's going to be touching the hand or touching the device. And then on my thumb, I'm going to select a point uh, over here on the pad. Those three points are going to 
line up with three points over here on the phone. So if I select the point in the back of the phone where the, the middle finger will rest, and then in the top corner where the index finger goes, and then the thumb position can be specified here. And now once those six positions are specified, I can click the match button, and that will align uh, the hand into the landscape position that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in showing the points anymore, so I can now come in and, and fine tune uh, the model. You bring the fingers down and touch it. And actually, here this one came in too close. And once those three hands or fingers are in line, well, then I can come into my final two fingers and use the same controls uh, to bring them in. And so with that, I have the cell phone positioned in the hand uh, like I would be holding it in a landscape view. From that point, I can then run a simulation with the hand as it is, or I can copy the hand into the left hand, so that way I can compare the difference or the performance of my device with the left hand versus the right hand. I can also copy that position off to a library, so that way I can use it with my team members or other devices that I'm designing. Just briefly here, I would like to show how to reposition or, or reuse those fingers. So if I set the visibility of my left hand back on, and if I select both, both models, I can right click and I can say copy finger positions. So now I'm interested in moving, moving the left hand to match the right hand. And when I click OK, we can see that the left hand is now positioned in the same way as the right hand, and then I'm able to use it. I mentioned that I'm able to import these into libraries, so I can also come in, create a library that is going to be my various hand positions, and I can click and drag and drop them and bring them into my library. So with that, I hope you have a better understanding of how to import and use the Poseable Hand within XFTTD. If you have any questions, certainly reach out to us, and we will be more than happy to talk to you about your analysis and see how we can help.